Well, hello again, friends and fans. Raptor here, and welcome back to Frontier Pilot Simulator. Today, we're going to take a look at a whole new continent, new craft, and, of course, new cargo. Good to have you all back. Previously, I played this, and it was a ton of fun, and you all wanted to see more, so welcome back. This is the medium ship. Before we played with the Scarab, which was the smaller ship, this is the medium ox, which uh, will allow us now to cross the vast ocean between here and uh, the mainland. Actually, let me go ahead and stop here and, and show you this. Uh, we're on this small island here, and I had no idea that this uh, island that I thought looked really like the fjords of Norway, uh, well, that's not the only thing here. Check this out. There's a whole new section to the planet, which I had never even seen before, uh, that's over here with all different types of cargo and different ways to make money. So if you love yourself American Truck Simulator, Euro Truck Simulator, Elite Dangerous, or anything like that, I think this is going to be the game for you. I'm also playing with a PlayStation 4 controller today via plug and play, and I think you can pretty much do the same uh, with an Xbox as well. You just plug the controller in. I was going to try to play with a joystick, uh, but it didn't seem to actually work for the Hotas one that I had. So there is joystick support. It just doesn't seem to be uh, fully functional for all uh, different types of uh, controllers. But anyway, if you're new to this game, essentially this is like being a space trucker. Except you're on the surface of a planet flying cargo and passengers around. And we have a new goal to uh, transport Isser Shadan, who is an ins inspector, to the mainland. We can also uh, transport cargo and other things like that. So I think in order to get across to the other side, let's start with a new passenger. And then we'll see what uh, cargo awaits us on the other side as we leave this planet. We're also going to take a look at the big, uh, big, big supply ship that's here called the Bellina, I think is the name of it. And it's huge, and it's going to be even bigger than this one. This ship here could probably fit our old ship in here before. Uh, the inspector does want us to pick him up, so I'm going to tell him yes. Uh, we can also transport cargo to the other world, but everything gets transported inside, so you don't necessarily get to see it. Though, before we leave, I'm trying to uh, get this uh, landing pod, or pad, or... Uh, platform or whatever you'd like to call it to uh, recognize that we're here so I can charge up. Whenever we fly to different areas of the map, uh, we will be uh, loaded up with different types of cargoes. For example, water or uh, food or batteries or equipment that they'll need to do research on these uh, different areas of the planet. And uh, this area here really looks to me like the fjords uh, and the hills of, like, uh, for example, Norway and Iceland. But I haven't been to that other continent before, so we're about to see exactly... Uh, what happens when we go over there. Now this craft is very powerful, has four points of entry, and I think has like 200 thrust, so that's pretty important, and uh, going to be pretty interesting, I think. So let's go ahead and uh, back her in here, and see if we can start powering up our batteries. Oh, it looks like I need to scoot over just a little bit. Now whenever you land at one of these pads, this is where you have the ability to load up with cargo. As you saw over there, there's a lot of boxes, a lot of different crates that can be loaded up onto the ship. And this one can actually hold two. So uh, our previous ship, the Scarab, was only able to hold one at a time. This we can do two jobs in one and really make a big profit. All right, we're going to go ahead and charge our batteries up to full. And there we go. All right, we are now ready to roll. Now, I've cheated in some money. I know, I know. So that way we can see more of this. But I wanted to uh, unlock some of the craft and such. So you'll, uh, you'll do that by unlocking a lot of stuff. But I really was curious to see all the mods and different things like that. Uh, that you can do to the to your uh, craft. So let's take off here, and let's go pick up the inspector, whom seems to be just over here on the other side of the large spaceport. Up above this uh, building to my left is a huge tower that shoots up into the sky, where spacecraft will come down into the atmosphere and offload and unload uh, load up cargo and stuff. Whoa, whoa, whoa! The thrust on this thing is way different. Woo! All right, well, let's go pick this guy up. This actually handles much differently than other craft. All right, perfect touchdown, though. And I'm also playing with a controller for the first time, so i got to get a little used to that, too. Last time we were playing with the uh, uh, with the uh, keyboard and mouse, but this time it's a little different. All right, let's have him... Where did he come from? Under the wheel, I guess. Or he just popped out of nowhere so we could land. Okay, he wants to go to uh, research, research Platform N, or that's where we picked him up from. Uh, I'm inside. Let's go to research, research Platform N. Where is that? Research Platform N. There. He wants to go out to, like, this oil rig out here. Look at that. And there's, like, an island on the in-between. We might need to actually pick that up uh, to get... Uh, wow, look at look at the distance. We might actually have to stop there to get extra batteries. That's 9,000 meters from here. Holy crap. Right, let's go ahead and cancel that. I'm actually going to fly here first to this midway point. Land there, recharge our batteries, and then go there. Oh, we can't do... A Why wouldn't it let me do that? Left-click one, and then left-click two. Ah, there we go. Perfect. 
All right, so now we have our waypoint set up. All right, let's take off and let's have ourselves a... Wait a minute. Now, now we can have ourselves a safe flight. All right, this craft is a lot more powerful, but also a little heavier than the previous one. And uh, now we have a very important passenger right now on board. So that's pretty cool. All right, let's get out of here. Very nice design of this craft, too, and we have yet to try out the big one, the uh, Bellina. Oh, this... Ooh, look at this. This thing handles way differently. Ah, these different engines. She's much faster now, now that she's up at, at the appropriate height. I'm assuming we could probably go about 200 meters per second. We're gaining altitude. Now it's going to be a long flight over there. I've never flown this far away from the island before. Oh, cool. You can see our, uh, our thrust. That's so cool. All right, I don't know if we have enough actual fuel to get there, but ooh, it's really windy now. Uh, let's mark our thrust here. There's actually a cruise control option for this ship. And with all the ace combat that I've been playing recently, this is definitely... A di this is almost like uh, flying a helicopter more than an aircraft. There we go. We're picking up speed. And it looks like uh, altitude's pretty good, too. Okay, good. All right, I'll try to make a straight shot for this place. If not... Uh, We'll get there soon. Now I think there's also a flap. Con uh, there's also flap control, but I'm really interested to see this new uh, continent. Now I also want to see the new ships and such. We also have an upgrade on this uh, ship for extra batteries, so we have uh, plus three thousand on our. Uh, we have like plus three thousand uh, energy on our batteries. Now, according to our current power consumption, we've got about four minutes worth of uh, fuel up at the top. And it seems like we can only go about a distance of 50,000, so we're definitely not going to be able to make this. So how do I bring up things on the map? If I press V, that's for wind. I need to be able to see markers. There we go. That's where we want to go. We'll go to the Raglar transport instead transit rather that we should be able to make and then we'll get fully charged so because of that island we'll be able to hit the midway point cool wow fuel efficiency is a really important thing so now we're kind of like on a transatlantic flight right now typically if you've seen our previous episode uh, you saw that in the Scarab, we were delivering all sorts of cargo uh, pretty short distances. It's like we were a local delivery truck. But now we're kind of like a long-haul bus service until we get to the new continent. And once we're there, we'll be able to start delivering things like scientific equipment and uh, computers and microchips and other expensive cargo for even more money. Wow, this planet is really windy. If you press V, you can see where all the airstream's going. So it's a little uh, turbulent flying over this ocean. But uh, interestingly enough, they transport things across the ocean uh, via ship that some of you have seen in our previous episode where we went to the port, and they actually seem to be like planes that land uh, when they get close, and then they just basically dock at port. So they're like some low-flying aircraft, or more like the, um, I think the Russians used them, um, the Eurocrons, which are basically like a, it's kind of like a, plane that fl only floats in the water and it, it's propelled by uh, jet engines. A really cool thing. I'll try to remain uh, fuel efficient here. Let's go for full boost. There we go. Getting awfully low to the water now. We're about 500 meters above. Uh, the surface. And we have the ability to go about 25 more. So even though we bought this uh, craft, it's a little misleading because you you uh, that you're given an objective to fly over to the new planet with no cargo, just this guy to learn the run. Except you won't be able to make it without the batteries. 
Uh, this place here is about 17, 16 kilometers away. I think that means kilometers, or perhaps that's, uh, maybe it's knots. I don't know, actually. Uh, I'm assuming it's, uh, our weight, oh, look at that. Our ship weight is, is actually getting lighter, too, as we're burning fuel in the upper left corner. That's neat. All right, so there is finally new land for us. We've got about a minute and 17 left of fuel. That seems really dangerous. We're still able to go about 13 kilometers with this only being about eight out. All right, we're ready for our final approach. Dino one to regular transit. We're coming in final approach. I guess since we have, like, an inspector on us, maybe we're like Air Force One. I don't know what this guy's rank is, but there's a huge volcano there. Wow. That's awesome. This is our first look, my first look at least, at a uh, new continent in the game uh, that was here in our previous run. I just didn't even know about it. I thought it was just a small island. I thought, oh, that's neat. Nope. Whole entire continent ready for us to explore. All right, we're getting ready for our landing now. Let's go ahead and start slowing down. And he wants to land at a different place, so we need to come in for the main landing zone. Ooh. Well, let's see if my landing can be better than my last one. Oh, yep. All right, I was waiting to see if the landing gear deployed. Perfect. Oh, and there's a hangar here. Which means we can buy a new craft as well. Fantastic. Wow, we barely made it, boys. Wait, what was that? Wait a minute, I can press square and something happens. What is that? Is that... Wait a minute, is that flight mode? Wait a minute. I just pressed square and something happened when I was on the landing pad. What the heck does square do? Did that make it more of an airplane mode? Oh, God. I have so much to learn. All right, let's recharge. No items here for purchase. Maybe there's some upgrades. Let's take a little peek and see what we got for upgrades. So yeah, this ox. This looks really cool. The front of this aircraft looks incredible. I really like that. And I'll have to find out what uh, pressing square does. Maybe it... Oh yeah, it's got a, a different flight design. This game is... I, I'm so glad that I'm discovering things while playing because, you know, you, you just... You can't go into everything knowing it. Nobody wants to read the instruction manual. I mean, pff, come on. All I want to do is fly. And so far, so good. All right, so now we got another repair and uh, shop here where we can purchase. I wonder if we can switch at any of these garages, too, if we wanted to switch aircraft for different jobs. That'd kind of be cool. All right, what do we got here? Uh, accessory change. Engines with forced feed. Pl uh, power plus 20%. Increases our weight a bit, too. Wings. Oh, that's for a d different ship type. Oh, wow, look at that. Uh, rigidity plus 100 for power. Wow, that's crazy. All sorts of different uh, things here. All right, this will add more weight to our craft, 1,300 pounds, but will allow us to haul more. So I'm going to go ahead and get that. Let's get the better engines. So you can see our engines now being removed. That's a really cool touch that you actually see things taken off and replaced. And this will allow us to hold more. Oh, wow. What? These engines are red now. Oh, I really wish we could customize all of our colors and stuff. That is a huge engine, dude. Now we can lift some heavy cargo while we're here. Oh, and they're replacing the rear engines as well. That's crazy. Looks like we might need some repairs as well, so let's go ahead and do that. And I love these garages. They really remind me of, like, just playing StarCraft II or something like that. You got that, that space guitar, you know? It's really neat. And I think there's also general wear and tear, too, on your craft. So even if you make, like, the perfect landing, I still think, like, you know, your craft needs to be repaired from the violent winds and other things that can affect it. 
Okay, well now we have suspended batteries, so we get capacity plus 3,000, plus 20 uh, percent more power on our craft, which might make us more fast. Uh, well, yeah, takeoff and such might be faster. We'll see. All right, repairs are almost complete, and we can go. All right, let's get out of here. All right, the ambassador is still on board. Hopefully he didn't have anywhere to be. What's he going to do? Get a competitor's uh, transport? Oh, I love that. All right, let's take uh, let's take ourselves over to the land launch pad and take off. We'll go down to research N. All right, uh, he's an inspector, I guess I should say. I don't know, making making him sound like an ambassador makes me feel a little bit more like BA than I'm bringing this guy around. All right. Okay. Clear. Woo! Well, that is that is a responsive engine. Very nice. Landing gear up. All right, now let me press square. Oh my god, square was flight mode the whole time. We could have gotten here so much faster. I had no idea. That is so cool. Oh, wow, now it's flying like a plane. Oh, no, this is more like novice controls in Ace Combat, though. That's okay. At least at a level, at level out, we're not a fighter jet. That is so cool. Wait. Pull up. There we go. Ooh, she doesn't... Ooh, she doesn't handle like a... Like a fighter jet at all. Cool. Now, I know there's ways we can adjust flaps and do things like that. I just haven't uh, set that up. That's really awesome. I had no idea that was there. That is so cool. So the uh, larger craft has the ability to do this as well. So the previous plane, uh, the previous transport, the Scarab, was more like just kind of like a helicopter delivery truck. Are we going supersonic? Did I just break the sound barrier? Did I? I think I just broke the sound barrier. Dude, what's going <laughs> This is so awesome. Wow. This is great. This is so cool. Dude, I had no idea. Wow. That tutorial area does not give this game justice. Because only now am I actually finding out all the cool stuff about this game. This is awesome. Boy. This is really helpful for this larger planet. I guess the Scarab is perfect for the other one, but this is the type of uh, ship that you're going to want for the larger continent. Look at that, baby. That is awesome. I was like, oh, we're never going to make it. Who designed this thing? And now look at it. It's because we were like in helicopter mode when we should have been in plane mode. All right, we're about... We'll uh, switch back at about three kilometers. All right, get ready to initiate uh, switch back. There's the platform. Ooh, it feels windy up here. Alright, there's the hel helipad there. I don't think we can... S uh, we have to go to the other zone, because I, I don't think we can land there and roll down to where he wants to go. Wow, this is way more fuel efficient, too. This is awesome. All right. Dino 1 on final approach. Now, I think that uh, yellow, that orange line on the right, too, of my thruster is, if it's above that line, that means we'll ascend, and if it's below, we'll, we'll descend. So anything less than that means we're coming down because of how heavy this thing is. Dude, that was one of my best landings yet. Woo! We're down, baby. Hey, buddy, will you take me to the port? Hell no, I'm not going back there. I want to stay on this new planet. Not now, sir. All right, deliver passenger. We just opened it up. Can he get off from here? What? So fast? I guess I fell asleep. Did we arrive? No more time for sleeping. Thanks, buddy. You deserve 5,000 credits. Oh, yeah, fast. Yeah, we took a pit stop at a car garage, but yeah, okay. Uh, sir, I'm not going to the port. Leave me alone. I want to go explore this new planet. I don't want to go back to the port. Port is where we came from. 
All right, let's see where we're at now. Research platform N, so we can get recharged here. There's the cargo spaceway. So we know that the... First of all, there's a trawler out there. What is that thing? Oh, wow, we can actually deliver, like, stuff to a ship. Oh, that sounds cool. What does this have? Advanced B2 rations, a bioscanner, and a passenger. G-type batteries. Engines with force feed. Oh, that's telling you upgrades. Empty batteries. All right, well, let's get charged up here and go inland somewhere. Uh, what's there? A drill site. Uh, that requires... What do we have here? To advance B2 rations. And they want B2 rations. All right, let's go to the drill site. Head inside. There's also cargo spaceway. Oh, there's lots of stuff here for upgrades. Holy crap. Uh, cargo spaceway. Okay, that makes sense. Wow, look at all that stuff. We can fully upgrade our ship from here. I think those are all for me. Or at least most of them probably are. All right, let's do this. We're going to go over to the drill site. And then from here... Quick release chassis, it seems like another upgrade that we can get. We'll swing back to the cargo spaceway and see if we can get upgrades. Look at that. Wow, there's so many things out here. Big crater mine, research platforms. I think yellow means that we can't get to it with our current fuel, I think. So once we refuel, I think those should be within our destination. Okay, let's mark this on the map. And uh, we'll go there first, and let's get refueled. Wow, this is really cool. I thought I was going to be able to get both the ox and this in uh, at the uh, beller bellerina, or whatever it is, bellina, beluga, whatever it is. I thought we could get both, but I might end up just spending my time doing this. This is incredible. I mean, we've discovered a new continent, new upgrades, new ship. I didn't even know this stuff was here. Whoa, baby, whoa, 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 whoa. Roll forward a little bit. There we go. Oof, that was rough. And wind is coming in hard. I'll back her up. You know, if you're within the yellow circle, they should just allow you to uh, recharge if you're there. Oh, not that mode. Turn green. There we go. All right, recharge batteries, please. And I will purchase those rations. And you can see it load in the back. You can see the crane arm come out, and it'll be slid into the loading bay of the uh, ship. Our little crane will come out, grab it, and load it on board. We can actually grab two different pieces of cargo, so if there was another option to deliver stuff here, we would grab that. Okay. Dino 1, clear for takeoff. Woo! Now, let's see if I can find this place now. There it is. Been out here and we'll switch to uh, plain mode now. That is so cool, dude. You can be like a helicopter. Yeah, this is like this is like long haul trucking, dude. You can be like a helicopter, cargo ship, all sorts of things. Wow. All right. So what is this? Like a desert? Ooh, it's gonna make. Uh, Avoiding those giant, like, plumes of smoke, dangerous. Maybe we better go up high. Wow, look at those giant mountains. I'm going to keep getting up in, this, up in the sky here. Is this, like, snow around us, or what is this? Wait a minute, I've lost, uh... Wait a minute, did we enter some sort of electromagnetic jamming? Protective circuit overload, time to restore 30. Oh, the radar's jammed. Wait, 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 we don't want to go supersonic. Volcano, volcano. Hold on. I need our thing to restore here. I don't know where we're going. Let 
Right on. Oh, there we go. Oh, I think if we go too high, uh, it jams our radar. Because there was like a lot of blue, like electromagnetic activity outside the ship. Wow, look at the continent though. It's like a volcanic desert. Looks like there's, is that a rock pile down there or a building? Looks like a rock pile. Well, at least we were close to where we were supposed to go. There's waterfall up here. Oh, wow. Alright, this area looks a little rough. Good thing we're not in, uh, good thing I stopped there. Airplane mode would have been uh, a little dangerous. Alright, boys, here comes your food. Oh, wow. It's actually a runway. I wonder if we could have landed like we were, uh... I wonder if we could land like an aircraft. Where's the landing pad, though? I see the large square there, but where's, like, the official landing pad? Oh, there it is. Whoa, whoa, the frame rate, though. Ooh, those frames. Oof, that, that makes it impossible. Impossible to fly. And I have a beefy computer, so it ain't that. Little optimization problems from the game, but that's all right. That is cool, though. That mine seems to be some sort of a vent or something for geothermal activity. Oh, I bet that's what it is. They built, like, a giant... A uh, fan blade over a geothermal vent, and it's just spinning that thing constantly. That is awesome, and very dumb to have a landing zone literally next to a giant pit of fire. Attention, in the area of Northern Gorge, pilot disappeared, signal was lost, coordinates received. Oh, I see, like a bonus if you go rescue a downed pilot. Oh, that's cool. Alright, let's get this upgrade complete. Or rather, uh, drop off our cargo, and then Actually, we can get an upgrade. There's a hangar there. So I get some repairs done. Jeez, this thing... Alright, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna drive with the keyboard. It seems to be a little easier... There we go. To drive with the keyboard. It was the... Controls sometimes for taxiing are a little strange because... Sometimes I will press D to turn right. And the wheels will go left. And I don't know why it does that. And it's the same on the PlayStation controller. But they're still working things out. The game's still in development. And I think they're doing a great job. Really a fantastic job. All right. Let's go ahead and deliver our rations. Uh, shielded Livermorium container. Deep Explorer Surface G-Wave Scanner. Hmm. Well, I still want to go to our destination that we chose last time. Just to see what's out there. The cargo space way requires... Uh, samples of underwater flora, local flora, G-type batteries for 13,000. Underwater, uh, yttrium. Okay, what do they have here? Uh, I don't think we have anything here that they want. Oh, there's the search area for the downed pilot. Wow, all sorts of different unique missions and things available in the game. That is cool. Kind of want to just fly out to the cargo spaceway just to see what they've got for upgrades. Uh, we already have the forced feed engines, but I don't know what the quick release chassis means. There's also a passenger here, too. Alright, let's head into the uh, repair shop and see what's waiting for us and get a few repairs. Especially to our radar, which got hit by, like, electromagnetic activity. That's really neat. All sorts of different things that can affect flight, except we're not talking about a bird strike or uh, icing on the wings. We're talking about literal, like, uh, oh, hey, you're above the clouds, so that's the, su you know, the sun or whatever is uh, hitting your craft directly and causing, you know, like a solar flare to take you out. All right, into the repair station we go. I really wish there was a way for me to customize my own ship. I would like to be able to paint it to my liking. I would like to be able to uh, put my logo on there. And uh, maybe put stickers and things on it. Because you do actually get to see outside your ship the whole time. There's not an external mode, unfortunately. Oh, a quick release chassis adds 50% rigidity. But it is pretty heavy. Okay, well, let's go ahead and do some repairs. 
for 170 credit. That's basically nothing. That's a very affordable price. So with three ships available, and uh, with a whole new continent and stuff, this feels like a whole new game all of a sudden. And I was really liking this game from before, but now I'm, I'm in love. And we got two upgrades already. The, it seems like the things we can upgrade are the chassis, the wings, the power, and the batteries. And it seems like it's the same on the right here. External fork routing batteries. What the hell? That must be for the big boy. Wow, capacity plus 7,000 on that. Insane. Look at that. That is really cool. This game's got good charm. Flammable fuel tank over there. That looks great. All right, well, with no real cargo to pick up here to bring anywhere to the left, I think we should just check out and see what the cargo spaceway looks like. Other than that, everything else seems like waterfalls and... Well, then again, the cargo spaceway, ha well, it has a lot of stuff for upgrades, but maybe we should explore a little bit more. The waterfall seems like maybe we'll have a change of plans. Flip the script here. What does the waterfall have for a... Uh, is it just a scenic thing to go see? I hover over it. It doesn't... It doesn't actually have anything there. There, That might be risky. If I fly there and we, if we're lower on battery, see, doesn't these are just maybe platforms? Maybe they don't, maybe they don't sell or buy anything, but they're areas for you to recharge, as like halfway checkpoints. The mountains has one too. So the mountains, uh, waterfall, and sea seem to have platforms that you can land on. Geysers, but these are actual real things, or maybe they're still building those platforms. Interesting. Security services base. Colossal wing, suspended batteries, badger. Trawler there requires uh, bio sublimate rich in disponium. What? Oh, that's what's available. They want to buy G-type batteries, drones, and equipment. Anyone have G-type batteries, drones, and equipment? Okay, well, I think we're going to just fly over to the spaceway then and see if we can get an upgrade. Because I would like to see what else we can do to this plane. Flying cargo is pretty cool and checking out destinations is too, but if we get a fully upgraded plane, we can do it twice as fast. Let's just take off here. Those planes can't taxi worth anything. I wish they had a tighter turning radius. All right, cargo spaceway. Be on our way there shortly. I'm just gonna get through this uh, ravine first. This canyon of death. And it's pretty foggy, so I can't really see. Switch to plane mode. And away we go, dude. That is awesome, man. We'll just have to be careful about not going above... Like, uh... 15,000, I think, might be the cutoff for that. Alright, when we get to 300 meters per second, that seems to be when we also break the sound barrier. Maybe faster than that. It's really cool. Oh, we're about to break it. Here it comes.
I think it's at like 330. Beautiful landscape though. So we're down here mining uh, rare minerals and uh, setting up like uh, trade and shipping things around. A lot of manufacturing must happen on this planet too. As humanity has colonized it. It's really neat. I like that there's water too. It really feels great that there's actually some sort of life on the planet because they keep saying that there's like local biological life and things. So that's really cool. Wait. Oh, this thing's up in the sky? Oh, dude. Wow, dude. What? We're landing on a carrier. Are you kidding me? Dude. The radar's getting busted again, but... Oh, dude. Dude, that is so awesome, man. Oh, and there's a hangar here, too, for the upgrades. That's, that's what that was. Oh, we need to get our uh, radar upgraded somehow to not... Well, this thing's moving. Holy crap. I think this craft is... Mo is this moving? Wow, dude. That is so awesome. We landed on an aircraft carrier. Like, literally, this thing is like a cargo ship in the sky. And look at all the cargo on board. That is so awesome. All right, let's head inside and see what we can get for upgrades. And then get our batteries recharged. It's a good thing I bought the extra battery storage when we were uh, back at HQ when we started. And that is impressive. The fact that they've thought of these things. It's like a little tutorial island for when you have the scarab. And once you buy the ox, man, it opens up the whole world. That's incredible. All right. Oh, there's a repair zone inside. Yep. Hangar in there. So we can repair and get upgrades. Too bad our ship, that little thun that stuff going on on the outside is our ship being like uh, hit by magnetic or so something. I don't know. I think we can uh, get an upgrade maybe to deflect that type of activity. And it's dangerous not to know where we're going. We get lost. Oh, dude. Wing lift plus 20, power plus 20. Oh my god. Wow. This thing is awesome. We can get everything here. Anti-overload minus 50. Oh, that's going to add a lot of weight, though. We got to. We can't just get everything. We got to be picky and choosy about what we get. All right, let's start at the top. Power plus 40, wing lift plus 20. That seems really useful. Uh, quick release chassis rigidity, but that adds weight. This seems to be the heaviest thing. All right, let's go ahead and do this. Let's get these other engines now. I want to see what they look like and how they work. This is awesome. Really, really awesome. And I love the fact that you can see things being added and removed. I would love for an Euro Truck or American Truck Simulator if you could see parts kind of being uh, attached and detached. However, those parts are, you know, small and done by hand, as where these are huge. Look at that engine. Holy crap. Are you sure that fits on us? Wow, dude. And it gives us plus 40 power and wing lift, too. So the little wings on the end means that we can get more lift by becoming a long, long-range aircraft. All right, we got to pick up some cargo now, because uh, you know I've I've just been flying around. Well, no, we we did drop off that uh, that protein earlier. All right, quick release chassis rigidity plus 50. I think we're okay. Uh, chassis with reinforced prime three motors, power plus 200. What? What is that? Oh my, that gives us even more lift. I want to see what that does. Uh, air drag plus 20, but wing lift plus 60. Oh, that's better for long distance travel. Capacity 7,400 for added batteries. My god. Wow, let's get that. And what are these things? Forced gyro compensator. Oh, that's anti overload minus 50. Okay, we might need that. That's when we get overload. Or maybe that's me using the engines too much or something? I don't know. 
Compact hold gravity grippers. Capacity. Whoa. Capacity increases by 5,000. That is awesome. All right, let's get the... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get... Yeah, give me the forced uh, gyro compensators. Yeah, thanks. And then also I'm going to grab the other thing with the three motors. I want to see what that does. That seems really cool. All right, here comes the next thing. You're removing my wheels? Chassis with reinforced prime three motors. Power plus two, 300. Dude. That's going to be incredible. So what's our total stats? Like, I can't quite see... Oh, wow, they're removing our wheels, dude. I can't quite see what they're going to add here. Oh, we get red wheels now. <laughs> oh, I really wish I could just customize the color myself. So we get some giant wheels now. Oh, I think I know what this is. So the the landing gear on the outside of them also hold extra batteries. So it's like getting four extra batteries that are in... So when those fold up, they, they're like an extra battery compartment. Dude, that is crazy. And they gave us all those accessories. All right, I think we're good. Let's fly with this. And we have an 8,000 uh, capacity on our ship for uh, hauling. Oh, let's uh, get repairs too while we're at it. Just one last thing. Man, that is so cool. This planet, the fact that you can fly on aircraft carriers, the fact that you can upgrade your ship. I wish I could, you know, customize the, the appearance and paint myself. This is very comfortable to play with the PlayStation controller, by the way. I think Xbox would be the same. And uh, I think a joystick would be also maybe preferable, too, for especially, enthu not enthusiasts, but people who kind of want some quote-unquote quote realism, you know, for, you know, how... I'm assuming these would probably be flown the same way that a plane would be flown with a joystick or some, something along that line. But a controller will do just fine. Alright, repairs are complete. Let's get out of here. Oh, see, look at that. We're already being hit by, like, electromagnetic activity, which they call overcharge. Wow. The amount of things that I've done in just this episode. Oh, and look at those engines, dude. This thing is awesome. Let's get uh, get out of here. All right, can we buy anything here? I want to see what we can trade. Another annoying thing, too, is I wish we could trade on a platform no matter which way we were facing. It'd be nice if the crane could just somehow lift it over us. I see what they have in store. They want us to flip around so that way we can uh, pull up the back cargo container compartment to where the crane may be. Wow. I don't, is this thing moving? Let's sit still for a second. The clouds look like they're moving. This might be moving too. Maybe this thing flies in a circle or something. Very slowly. Or it could just be suspended in, in space or whatnot. Alright, Raptor's got to do parallel parking now. And, uh, yes, Frontier Pilot Simulator. A game in which you'll be doing a lot of... Uh, this thing's not turn worth nothing. You'll be doing so much driving. Oh boy. Alright. Let's go up this way. Yeah, the only annoying thing is moving on tarmacs. And getting to uh, areas where you need to refill or recharge or whatever. Okay, well we have extra battery capacity now up to 12,000. So we went from uh, I think we originally started with, uh, like, five, I think? Four or five? And we got up to eight, and now we're at twelve. Twelve thousand four hundred. That's amazing. All right, bio-radar and associated equipment for four thousand pounds. Wow, look at that thing charge. Go, 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 go. All right, charge complete. All right, bio-radar and associated equipment. Let's see where we can bring that to. Bio-radar and associated equipment. Oh, actually, if I buy that, I wonder if it t automatically tells me who's buying it. That'd be helpful. And even more parts that you can buy. Look at that. Bio radar and equipment. I wonder if they require that back at the main start.
G-type batteries. There we are. Bio radar and associated equipment at research platform E. All right, let's set course. And let's buy this thing. I am super impressed with this game more than I was before. I thought it was pretty cool before, and I was like, oh, this is a neat concept. But after playing this now for uh, another couple hours and just kind of experimenting with all the things that you can do, it's really cool. Now, again, I've hacked in some of the money, so that way, you know, we can take a look at this stuff, which makes it a lot of fun. But I think the feeling of satisfaction of doing it yourself... Oof, this car goes heavy, baby. <laughs> Look at how we lift it off real slow. Even with the advanced engines, the engines are like, nah, dude. But yes, the feeling of satisfaction I think you'll get from uh, doing this yourself and earning your upgrades is going to be uh, unmatchable. All right, let's make sure we're pointed straight towards this thing. I don't know how to use... If I use R1, R2 for yaw, that doesn't seem to work, so we just got to like tilt our direction this way. And uh, when I tried to adjust my controls to R1 and L1 as well, it doesn't seem to work as well. So I guess we'll try to tip ourselves over this way. Come on, baby. There we go. Wow, look at that. We can travel at like 400. Let's go at like 401. Well, now we're really moving. 71. We can go 136 kilometers. Oh, and we're about to hit that, break that barrier. There we go. Dude, this game is just, just great. I, I just, this is really relaxing. For those of you who want to play, you know, if you, again, if, if you like a American truck or Euro truck or a flight simulator game, this is like a nice combination of everything. And the fact that it's like not realistic means that the developers can do essentially whatever they want just to make it more enjoyable. So they've added all sorts of different equipment and things to tr haul around. So cool. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, we have a little bit better of that uh, protection now from whatever we purchased up there. But I like the fact that you can do whatever you want. I think we got to go to a lower altitude to repair our radar. Protective circuit overload. So, yeah, there must be some sort of electromagnetic uh, activity in the sky. And the only thing you can do is buy things to protect yourselves from it, but it doesn't eliminate it completely. And if, it, if there is a thing that does it, I'll buy that. I'll buy that for a dollar. All right, boys. Uh, on the other side of the lake is where we're going. So I think we can... Oof. Go ahead and slow it down now. Oh, no. Tw still 28 to go. I guess we can go sightseeing in the volcano, too. Have our lunch over the old volcano. Oh. Are we going into, like, another... Wait, what? What was that that I... All right, let's hit max speed now. Didn't mean to hit square. Had to hit triangle. There we go. I thought I flew into like a geyser or something in the middle of the ocean. But maybe it was just a big cloud. There we go. Sound barrier again. I'm glad that these uh, research platforms and everything that we drop off at can uh, give us some more fuel. I'm going to want to come down on top of this one because we really don't have the ability to hover too long with this piece of equipment loaded inside. So I'm going to try to drop right on top of it. Slow her down, baby. Slow her down. Oh, we're going way faster. Okay, well, those engines are certainly good for forward uh, flight maneuvering, but not so good for uh, this. Like, look at 
that that orange line, how high we have to be in our power in order to s overcome the gravity. And we still got three minutes worth of fuel, so we're good. Somebody named Mike Delu there. Oh, hi, Mike. How you doing? What's ING mean? Whoa, 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 whoa. What? <laughs> Oops. Oh, this is good now. Now you can see exactly what happens if you crash. Now, delivering that cargo, if we would have completed that, would have just gotten us some money. What is that? Hey, buddy, will you take me to the Trawler 06? Uh, sorry, Mike. Uh... <laughs> I got other places to go. I gotta go back to the... Where are we going? The crater mine? Is that where we're gonna respawn from? If that happens, you just have to pay a minor fee to get your ship essentially returned to you. Or repaired. Or a new one. Oh, this is cool. Look at how fast this thing flies. And then we have to fly over to the big crater mine. Well, we saw the platform. Now I'm curious to see the big crater mine. What is that? Is that... We didn't land there before, did we? That's not where that giant uh, water was coming from, was it? Or that, uh, the wind power. Geothermal plant. Oh, this is cool. Oh, they got solar panels set up near the mine. This doesn't even look like a mine. Ah, there you go. Oh, darn. We got lost 2,800. Well, that's what insurance gets you. Oh, cool. We can upgrade here. Is there anything? Nope. Nothing for upgrade. And there you go. So if that happens, not a big deal. You just get transported to a new area and just have to pay a little bit of a, you know, you just have to pay a, uh, like a copay on your insurance or your deductible or whatever. Not too bad. All right, let's take a look at what else is around. So yeah, even if I delivered that, it wouldn't have been like that bad of a deal. Where were we? Oh, yeah, we were flying over here. Oh, and they don't even want that anymore. <laughs> There's where Mike is, though. All right, what can we get from this? Uh, oh, what does the power station require? Ah, they've got batteries that they can send out. Very cool. And what is the other thing? Carbon structural plates. Woo! Wow, they'll give 36000 for that. That is awesome. So they... Oh, wait, they have uh, G-type batteries there. Metal plastic structural frames. Metal plan. Oh, that's for 41000 Oh, that's actually the better deal. Oh wait, that's that's for thirty six thousand. They'll buy that for forty. Or wait. Oh, never mind. I was looking at the wrong one. Use service G type batteries. Samples of underwater floor. It doesn't look like uh, anybody's selling that uh, microwave internal. Wow, look at all the stuff that's here. That is so cool. Yeah, I've got to hand it to myself for all the upgrades we've done. The ship handles very differently each time, and that's really cool. Primary Pasidium, all this stuff that you can buy. I, I want to land at one of the trawlers, too. That would have been fun to drive him over there. Passenger service is cool. Because you can explore new areas. And make money doing it. What was that? Canned coxcomb and juice. Oh, wow. Underwater flora. I don't see any of that uh, meta metallic uh, and plastic uh, building material that they wanted. Structural frames. Oh, well. All right, everyone, that is it for yet another look at this really just awesome game. I really am liking this more. And I think next time we will go ahead and buy ourselves the Ox here and return to that giant aircraft carrier. And uh, really a ton of, ton of stuff. Looks like uh, somebody wants a ride over to the mines, so I'm going to pick this person up and uh, we'll head over to... Uh, we're going to help Sarah Connor stop the, uh, stop the uh, alien invasion or the robots. And eh, we'll tell her no, screw it. <laughs> all right, I'll see you all next time. Thanks for watching. Thanks for leaving a like. This game, a lot of fun. A lot of cool stuff to upgrade, a lot of cool stuff to buy. If you crash, no problem. If you, uh, you know, don't want to go to every place, no problem. You can just do whatever you want to do. It's your game. All right, I'll come back and I'll show you the ox, and we'll haul some really heavy stuff with the biggest transporter in the game. I'll see you all next time. Thanks, as always, for watching, and I'll see you all very soon. Take care, and I'll see you more for, oh, for more uh, Frontier Pilot Simulator next time. Bye, everyone.